I'm Wendy Nather, and this is Tea and Security, Episode 1, The Perimeter. Today's tea is a chai spice decaf tea uh, by Stash Premium Tea. Uh, because I can't have too much caffeine, otherwise this will be a really short video. Uh, so first of all, let's get some things out of the way. Uh, this is an experimental series, and I have simplified a lot of the concepts in, the, in here, and I've omitted a lot of details. So if I omitted your favorite detail or I got something slightly wrong, you know, please don't write to me. So what is the perimeter in security? It's a very good question, and it's key to much of what we're doing in Duo in order to transform how organizations do security. So once upon a time, there was a network, and there was a computer, and this wouldn't be called the internet for a few more years, but as soon as you connected the computer to the network, there was always the risk that someone try, would try to talk to your computer and say something bad to it. So you needed protection in front of the computer to filter that conversation, and that's where we got firewalls from. Now, most computers today speak the same networking language, TCP IP. It didn't used to be that way, and there are still some computers out there that speak another protocol, but let's ignore that for now. So let's go a bit deeper. On every computer, there's the notion of port numbers. Think of these as a long list of numbers that help match up programs on both sides of the network connection. So if you want to send email, for example, you would connect specifically to port 25 for the simple mail transfer protocol, which is SMTP. Most of these standard programs have standard port numbers now, so that you're not random dialing a computer to try to find the right port for what you need to do. Think of it as dedicated phone numbers for different languages. If you want to speak to a web server, you would connect to port 80 on that computer. And if you wanted to speak hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, but with encryption, you would connect to port 443, which used to be called SSL and is now called TLS. Now, you don't have to use the same port numbers, but if you don't, you're not going to find many other computers that will talk to you. Every program that wants to talk over the network needs a port to do it on. The crazy thing is that there are over 65,000 ports. Many of them are so-called well-known ports. Some of them are registered with official entities. For example, I bet you didn't know this, Xbox Live uses port 3074. It used to be that people tried to hide a service on a high-numbered port instead of where it was supposed to be, like port 8080 instead of port 80. But that doesn't keep attackers out because they can just scan every port number and see what answers and what accent it has. So you need a firewall to dictate which computers can talk to yours over which ports and who's allowed to initiate the connection. When you have a big installation of machines, like all over the world, then every location where you have an internet connection is going to need a firewall. And this collection of firewalls has generally been known as the perimeter. But wait, it gets even fancier. Because once you can talk to a computer, you may be able to break out of the conversation you were having with it and use it to do something else. Like, yes, I know I was just transferring email to you, but now I want a sandwich. Send me over to the kitchen. That's how attackers move from one system to another to get what they're after. So lots of organizations ended up putting in another layer of perimeter and created what we call a demilitarized zone, or DMZ. This is what the DMZ looks like, kind of very abstracted. In this DMZ, you put servers that have to talk to the outside. For example, public web servers need to go out here, but you don't want them to be able to talk just anybody else inside your network in case someone manages to take them over. So you put in another set of firewalls to make sure it can only talk to the servers it needs, like a back-end database server. The perimeter can get pretty complicated the more you need to have talking to the internet. This is also complicated that a lot of organizations never get around to doing this in the rest of their network. Imagine having to figure out exactly which computers ever need to talk to other computers and on which of 65,000 ports they need to do it. Imagine having to write this all down in rules for the firewalls to enforce. It's, it's really hard. The other problem is that a huge majority of web applications all talk on the same two ports now, port 80 and port 443. It's like a huge hallway where you're letting a big crowd through. You can't tell who's a bad guy and who isn't. So if you're letting them all through on these ports, it doesn't give you a lot of control. This is where next generation firewalls come in like Palo Alto networks. 
They not only look at what wants to talk over these web ports, but they examine what they're trying to say. If somebody talks to a web server and then says, now I want a sandwich, the firewall will hopefully go, nah. -uh. And you can also think of the perimeter as everything belonging to an organization that you can contact from the internet. So it's not just the firewalls, it's every asset that you can reach. Um, for example, your landline telephone at home would be one asset, and the phone number itself for that phone is another asset that needs to be managed. Organizations need to manage their registered domains, like duo.com and duosecurity.com, as well as the IP address ranges that belong to them, and the domain name system servers that match up domain names and IP addresses, and the mail servers, and pretty much any other service that we let people use on the outside. So guess what? All of the Amazon Web Services that we use to run Duo on behalf of our customers will also have controls that we think of as a perimeter. But the perimeter can also be in front of the application where you log in. And that's what Duo Access and Duo Beyond do. So even if you got past the firewalls, or even if you're talking to an application outside the firewalls, you're still going to have to get past the Duo Guard. The perimeter is made up of the user, plus the device, plus the application. All of the decisions are being made with those three items not considering the network, and that's why Duo's different. So is the network perimeter going away? No, not at all. And nobody's ready to give up their firewalls. It's just that for some organizations, they're going to make more decisions on access based on the user device and application, not based on the network details. That's my, why you might hear people saying things like, the application is the perimeter, or the identity is the perimeter. If you think of the perimeter as the point where you make the first access decisions, then you're probably in good shape. So this is the end of episode one of Tea and Security. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for possibly other episodes of this. Let us know what you think, and also check out our blog on duo.com for more security